this. So, uh, as I posted you in the Slack, I uh, just want to make sure that everyone can open that file and they can connect to their Google Drive or their drive. Everyone with me with that? Is it all connected? So the process would be easy. I can do that again. All the mod. Okay. Can I move on with that? Everyone connected? Okay. Because that's one of the essential points. Okay. Can you also like the online people to talk to Willie if they have any? Yes. Uh, for sure, <laughs> Willie is there for you, and he knows everything. And please, uh, as I posted in a Slack, open the file and make sure it's connected. Uh, the thing is, uh, the reason I said uh, open a make a directory called anomaly because here I have used the address anomaly data. Yes, uh, Willie is right. It should be anomaly data. But if you put in any directory, you can just change this address to the one that you have in your Google Drive. But it should just match the thing that you have in your Google Drive. Because we want to load this data. Uh, so we can start. I just want to make sure everything is there. So for this session, uh, because for the last one, uh, we couldn't kind of complete the whole session. So this time I'm going to divide it in three, four sections. So I'm going to briefly talk about the thing that you want to cover here, and then uh, we'll move on. So he, uh, as I talk and describe in the video, here we'll talk about mainly isolation for us, which is one of the powerful models for doing any kind of animal addiction. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, one theme, and then we will see clustering method. And then at the very end, we'll try uh, kind of human generated data which was basically can be any kind of like a shuffling or anything so here I, I, I will use some generated data synthetic data that you have seen in the last session as well a super beautiful picture like that and then I will apply those model here and then the thing is then you will load the data, like the data going, going to be my mainly credit card. And then I will ask you to run a model based on that. And then it will be like a, an exercise for you. So that's the first section is just the data that you should be able to load. And then, as I said, we'll talk about isolation for us, some exercise, and then I, one SVM exercise, cluster, clustering exercise, something like that. So it's going to be like a kind of four uh, mini session within a main session and is hopefully going to be like a learning, coding, learning, coding, learning, coding. Okay. So first thing first, importing everything, generating the scientific data and then plotting them. Next one would be loading the KDD cup data, which this data set is, as you can read it, is actually has been designed for intrusion detection in network. Uh, so we're going to use it. They use that data for a competition back then. Here we're going to load it, load this data. The, the good thing about this data that I'm going to talk about is they have a kind of label. And based on that label, we can actually see what is the performance, performance of all these models that we're going to talk about. So we can see if you want to talk about the real data, is one STM better or is version for us is better? Or how, how can we actually improve them? So this is, a, as I said, intrusion, uh, like intrusion detection is like for, for a network data based on a competition. Next one is a credit card fraud detection, which is based on the real data in 2013. And you should be able to uh, load this data and make sure that you can actually load it. Uh, because if you can, then uh, we will have, we won't be able to move forward. Nope. Anyone else? You okay? You okay? Everyone okay? 
So everyone make sure that uh, you can actually see these index uh, in your notebook. Yes. What is KDD? Uh, KDD is the name of a conference, Knowledge Discovery. Uh, that's uh, this is like a, a competition in that conference, and we're gonna use it uh, here as a test. So, everyone, give me a thumbs up. I want to make sure <laughs> everyone's same page. You got it? And everyone online, if you have any problem loading that data, talk to Willie. <laughs> Okay. Moving forward. Okay. So then uh, you can see some of the property of the data here, which here you can see the frequency of the class. You can see, as I said, one of the problem in uh, any kind of odd layer detection or rare event detection or anything like that is like the the, the class that you're actually looking for is super rare. The, and you can see here, here the, the, the difference is like, it, it, it means like doing any kind of classification here would be super hard. Because you're talking about maybe sometime 0.1% uh, of the data will be the class that you're looking for, even or something even less than that. Because it's labeled data, so we have labeled, but it will be super small. And as you can see here, that was a distribution of uh, the normal versus outlier in the credit card data. I just want to move forward here. And then you can see some of the property of some of the feature. Uh, it means like some of the feature, so one of the good things that you can do whenever you're dealing with any kind of data set is you can visualize them per feature, and if you have any label data, you can actually see and compare them to see what is which feature is actually important for you. Because for some of the features that you will see, like no, a number of dimension is super important. Like let's say if you are doing any kind of let's like last week we talked about KNN as well or LOF, LOF as well. So one of the technique that you should use there is computing distance, and whenever you are increasing the number of dimension. It means you're actually adding lots of complexity to the, to the model. So, and even for STM or all those models, one STM. So the number, if you can in anyhow reduce the number of dimension, it will actually help the model, boost the model. And then you will have a maybe even better model, faster. So it's good that if you can analyze the data and pick those features that you're actually looking for. Here I'm gonna use maybe most of them, so because we wanna test and compare. But that's a good practice to actually visualize all the dimension, all the features, and see which one is important. Like you can see here, its distribution is a bit different between two classes. But here, for feature number 15, they're kind of like in the same area. So maybe that feature is not that much important or helpful for your data. So it means you can analyze your data and pick those features that is important. Uh, or if you want, you can do apply a PC on it or doing some sort of a re uh, dimension reduction that will then you will be able to look at uh, a few, few like a few dimension that is actually important. So uh, and then here I'm creating the the data here from that moment forward. The credit card X would be the train data for me, and a credit card Y would be the the label data. And we'll use it uh, in in all those models. 
So, so far, everything is going to be about loading that and make sure that everything is there. Same thing is going to happen for MNIST. You should be able to load them if you are connected to the Google Drive, and then you will have it. Uh, what? Oh, it was not about question. It's a technical question. I can make it a bit bigger. That might help. But you can work on that. So uh, then, OK, so here I have just loaded the, so you will have synthetic data, credit card data, the network intrusion data, and MNIST. And for MNIST, the thing that I've done is like that. Here, I wrote a function that you can play with if you want. I have a class that you can put any, any number. So if it's 7, it means number 7 for, from that moment would be the, the outlier uh, in, in your data. You can change it to number 7, number, I don't know, to number 8, number 9. Uh, some of them would be harder than the other. So you can, you can actually play with that and see how can you actually make a good model. Here I have a contamination uh, a score, which would be, if it's zero, it means you won't have any kind of seven in your data set. The thing I'm doing here it would be like that. I'm generating a new data set out of MNIST. MNIST, just to describe it, is image data from numbers zero to nine. So it, you have 10 class. Uh, each of them is an image, a 28 to 28 uh, pixel image. And, for, and you have 10 class. So the thing I'm doing is like that. I'm, I'm merging nine, nine class together. I'm saying that is a normal data. And I'm kind of re removing one of the class and call it like a, like a outlier. And I have a contamination score here because usually you have some anomaly in your data. And here you can say what, should be, what, was, what will be the percentage of that anomaly in your data. So if it's zero, you won't have it at all. So then we will deal with, uh, with semi-supervised models. And if you have it in your data, then it will be kind of like an uh, unsupervised model, which means you will have uh, a, like a, a, a outlay in your data set. So the thing is, you can play with that, and you can generate new uh, data set for yourself, make it harder or easier for your model, and you can play with that. So the, thing, the reason I'm describing that, because then I'm going to, at the very end, I'm going to ask you to uh, play with MNIST to make sure that you can actually find find that class that you're defining and using all these models that we want to talk about. So, can, I just, I mean, uh, can you remind me what's the difference between unsupervised um, and semi-supervised in this? Sure. Let me actually open that one. Uh, here, let me do the presentation as well. As we described, supervised is when you have labeled data in your training data that you're just using the label to do the prediction. Semi-supervised is you have one class, and all of them are positive. You, you, you're sure that whatever you have in your data set is clean. There is no anomaly there. There is no outlier there. It's, a, it's like a super clean data. That you, the only thing that you have to do is learn that data. And from that moment, then you can say, if something is not similar to the thing that I have seen, it should be Animal. It should be like a load layer. For unsupervised one, your data is not that clean, so you will have a layer in your data. Then it, so the thing that you have to try is how can you kind of remove those noise or or, or layer in your data, so you can be sure if you learn the distribution of the data, it, it will be perfectly uh, uh, the distribution of the clean data as well. So that's a different. In, in semi-supervised, you know data is clean, and there is no layer there. In unsupervised, you are not sure, and that's why uh, here I'm trying to give you that option that you can actually, if you make it zero, it will be semi-supervised. It means everything will be clean, and if is and if, if there's a number there, then it means you will have some. Uh, number seven in your data. So you can actually play with that as well. Uh, can you have a follow-up question? That is, so for the, because for semi-supervised, you're still dealing it from the classification point of view, right? Uh, kind of. 
kinda is then you can call it like a one class classification. But okay. Uh, so I I can like easily understand for the two to so the supervised one when you have two classes. At least. Then yes. you do classification like the whatever the uh, yes. model. But then how do you do the one class classification? Uh, that's the thing that we are discussing right now, and for one one stream we'll kind of see that that how it's working. But it's like whenever you have uh, one class, it means the only thing that you have to do is you have to try to learn the data set. It means in 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 like last week we talked about GMM or Gaussian model that you can just fit on your data. Then once you be, once you once you fit in, uh, any kind of Gaussian data on your data, then you will learn. The distribution. Whenever you don't, it means when you have one class, then you don't care about the class because you know all of them belong to that class, so you can completely remove it. Then you have unsupervised problem, kinda, in the context of that you don't have any label. That's the thing that you are doing there. It would be you have a data and then you want to learn it. Learning the distribution of data called generative models. It means you want to learn the distribution and then if you want, you can even generate a sample from it. But the thing is, uh, Learning the data, distribution of data, is one of the things that you can do, like fitting a GMM or using one SVM that we're going to see, and we'll talk about it. Like in one SVM, it's like that, that instead of saying that, instead of saying I want to separate two class, you're saying that I want to make a boundary around the data that I have. It's like if you have some point in your data, you just want to say you want to have a pencil and then, uh, or a pen, and then you want to just draw a line around it. And from that moment, you're saying whatever is inside, is the class that I'm looking for. If you're outside of it, then uh, maybe you're an anomaly. So, so something like that. Yeah. I have a question um, the contamination in this case, technically, it's the anomaly, right? So why do we? What is the advantage of including the seven in this case in the data? If what, what we want to capture is like the normal distribution, <coughs> so why would we want to introduce the anomaly in this case? So the thing is. Uh, the reason, okay, for for uh, that one, uh, the reason that I have seven is like you you have you can you should remove one of the here. The thing I'm trying to say is like you can transfer any kind of classification algorithm into outlier detection. Let's say even for ImageNet, when you have let's say a thousand class, you can remove let's say one of the category from it, like say tree or I don't know a car from it, and say from that moment tree or car or any kind of bird can, will be an animal for me and then the rest would be a normal data the, then from that moment you want to learn the distribution of a normal one and then f if you see any class from any sample from the class that you said is a layer you should raise a flag but the thing is your data won't be clean like for credit card fraud data that we'll see it's, it's actual data set that some of the samples are actually fraud so you, you won't have access to super clean data, but the thing that you know is those out there are super small percentage of the data. That's why here I said, instead of completely removing seven from the data set, which if you put it put zero, it will be like that, you can have like a super small percentage of it inside your data, to, and then it will act like a noise, something that to make sure that it's kind of like a real data set with some out there in it. That you want to learn it and then you want to kind of remove it. That was the idea. 